even most content marketers aren't thinking enough about platform. Uh, they're taking the short-term approach based on what particular platform is hot at the moment. Um, and not thinking about that long, the long-term outcomes from a platform either continuing to grow and innovate or uh, failing or not staying up with the times. And what I would say on that, I can give you a, cu a couple of different examples. An example of thinking platform and how content is put into a platform, uh, one of the examples I gave you was the New York Times. The New York Times starting, I think, in the 50s, uh, would put eight to 10 photos of a particular uh, different crop photos of a particular photo into the archive. And an example would be like, well, how was that relevant back then? Um, if you did a group shot back then and you were putting that in a newspaper, you could pretty much see the group if it was in the newspaper because you had pretty big real estate. Nowadays, those crop shots and the head shots are extremely valuable because with mobile technology, it now allows those pictures to have value where it wouldn't have any value if I saw that large picture uh, on a phone. It, it, it would just be you know, pink dots of a face or pink, black, and green dots of a face. It wouldn't be anything of value. Um, and then on the, you know, in addition to the platform, so I give you a perfect example. Um, we were just at a CIO conference and we had four CIOs come up to us and say, we literally just finished launching content platforms. And as they launched in our company and we spent millions of dollars on them, the companies came to us and said, we're no longer gonna be in that business. And without having the back end chosen correctly and thinking about how the data, which is the content, is stored on that back end, it made transition to a new platform extremely costly and time consuming. It's predominantly a money and time issue. So when you're talking about a company, let's say has a, an IT department that spent a lot of time on a transition to a product, which means other things got put aside. Um, it means that things like having to go back and create a new taxonomy or metadata they may have to mainly go back and do that to all of their content again. It may mean that they have to, uh, they, they wouldn't lose the content, but the process of exporting that into a new platform, it could be 50, 75% of the cost of the new platform. So that, that's what's at risk on some of those. When choosing a platform, I think the most important thing is to think about longevity, uh, how you will evolve your content brand and product over the long run. Um, and by that, I mean, where will you be delivering that content? Will it, will it always be mobile and web or will there be other things? Uh, will it be in car? And if it's in car, how will you engage with that content in car? Would it be a search in car? Or is it gonna be um, using voice and searching with voice? And then obviously then, how you tag and store data today would be extremely different. Um, how we tag and the taxonomy is, is a search taxonomy versus I'm just speaking normally and asking for something. Like I wanna know where the, the best bars are with home, homegrown beer. That might be a different uh, taxonomy and different tagging than would happen with the current format of Google. Let's say the, the most common mistake is that it's usually done uh, a lot of that's done by, well, it's human error, right? So you're, you, it's, it's people making judgment. Um, and that would happen from not having a plan in place. So having a, a really well thought out taxonomy plan and metadata plan in place that would lay out parameters, how things are tagged, what kind of variables to use. Um, and then if you throw the human part on top of that, it kind of full boosts it a bit. Uh, yes, in, in some ways, yes, I, I, that's a loaded question. Um, I would say that um, where technology is and is going is to middle layer products that are stores of metadata. So in essence, all you're running is um, a database. And if that date, the, the databases are cheap to run, if you're only querying it periodically from, a, from a, let's call it like a master taxonomy or master metadata store, um, so yes, you could foolproof it by having those type of stores installed in a company and then whatever products are putting data into it um, are outputting into a unified, a unified language which then allows a small development team to build you know, across a larger organization. So in essence, you can, you know, nothing's 100%, but I think you have a much better chance today of uh, being able to foolproof your data than you have in the past. And I think the biggest part of that is 
if you put everything in one boat and that boat sinks, you're in trouble. 